when did the penny drop for you as a as a coach where you recognize those softer skills how impactful they can be and how important it is to develop a a relationship with those in front of you to have confidence and trust in your processes maybe the maybe what great coaches have in common isn't necessarily their their technical ability but their ability to inspire their ability to get athletes to follow to buy in the ability for them to raise their athletes expectations the ability to kind of help shape a shared um, direction that the athlete thinks oh yeah this is where i this this is where i want to go and this coach is helping me to get there do you feel like those skill sets as the coach are just as trainable as the technical side in terms of like your coaching eye and your and your ability to to communicate what you're seeing with the athlete in front of you that's actually a great question that's a great question and i'll tell you why um so and i know i'm i'm generalizing ridiculously but if you go to most organizations or certification bodies and how you train the various professions around physical adaptation whether it's technical coaches or SNCs or rehabbers or whatever it might be. It's a very mechanically driven process. And there might be, and there's more and more these days, there's a little kind of tip your hat to, well, obviously there's psychological issues and there's emotional issues, but they're generally underplayed. And we don't really get any guidelines of how we can be better. And we don't get any training in it. I'll give you two examples. And you mentioned one of them, communication. And do you think from the athlete's perspective, you know, is there an element of onus on the athlete to say, look, I'm not doing that rep. I'm just going to listen to my body here. And, you know, how do you I, think of it from that point of view? Obviously, that's you know, it's a coach and an athlete's relationship. It's the coach's responsibility, I guess, to prescribe training and, and manage the load and all that. And the, and the athlete's doing the right thing, I guess, technically in terms of trusting their coach. But at what point do you, do you back the athlete in to take onus on their own? It's their Olympics at the end of the day. Okay, that, that's another really good question, and we're kind of getting into the weeds here. But um, <laughs> I think it's—I I do think it's relevant and important. Uh, and I think that I don't think that's an event. I don't think it's that like the coach shake hands and go, "Okay, you're ready." I think mm-hmm. it's athlete comes to you, and maybe their training age is very young, and their training mm-hmm. experience is very young, and you need to be a little bit more dictatorial if you like but at the same time you farm out little bits of education this is why we're doing this this is how it should feel this is how it should feel the morning after and what about from the recovery side of things what what a what's your stance on recovery for an athlete that's in season so they're going for that week-to-week performance uh well i think it's something we get wrong quite a bit but it's hard (laughs) again it sounds like i'm Blame, I, I'm not blaming anyone. It's a very hard problem because, you know, certainly in a, in, a, in a team sport setting, different people will recover from different activities and different time scales. But yet we'll, we tend to overlay future stress at kind of set times. You know, we're going to do the field session at this time. We'll do the gym session at this time. Um, I think monitoring fatigue, again, that's another complex problem. What type of fatigue you're monitoring? How are you monitoring it? All types of technology now, mm. they all give hints. They all like they're all looking through a keyhole trying to describe a room. The best we can do is have multiple keyholes, but then understand that we could be missing some part of the big picture as well. What what have you found effective for maybe coaches that haven't built up that awareness yet of uh, where their emotions sort of take control and? What are some effective strategies to be able to be aware and maybe have a second to think before uh, reacting? Well, if I was to look back on my history, what I would think is, I think there was years when I was a bad coach. I was a bad coach because I kind of fell for the illusion that, oh, I'm quite good at this, you know, and I've good experience and I've worked with good athletes, so I must be good instead of kind of thinking, hang on a sec, working with good people, being with successful athletes, luck is a chunk of that, a big chunk. It doesn't mean you're good. Mm. If you want to be better, then what do I need to do to be better? Well, I need to dissect what I do, and that includes my thought processes, how I react, how I communicate. Um, 
and I need to, yeah, I need to have objectives. If I'm going training, if, sorry, if, if I'm going to coach a squad, then I need to go through the same process as they do. I don't need to do a physical warm-up. I definitely need to do a mental warm-up. 